We took a random sample from each graduating class to see how many of the students in the sample have at least one F uh, in a class. And the test we're going to run is the chi-squared test of proportions. The null is all the proportions are equal. The alternative has to be the complement. So we either say at least one of the proportions is different or not all the proportions are equal. Now we need to go back to the board and we need to get our expected counts. So we're going to use that formula. We see our sample sizes on the margin, the marginal distribution on the right are 30, 30, 40, and 40 for a total of 140 in a sample. So stop and think now. If the null were true and all the proportions were equal, hmm, I wonder what that same proportion estimate would be. If we look at the total number of yeses we got, the kids that actually have a at least one F, that's 28 out of a sample of 140. So by golly, the pooled P hat would be 28 kids out of the 140 have at least one F. That'd be a 20% estimate of what the same proportion would be if we're believing that the null is true and the proportions are equal. Well, now we follow the formula. The expected count is the row total, which is 30, times the column total, which is 28, divided by the grand total, which was the 140. Boing. And so what that gives us is 6. But hold the phone. If we go down here, we could do the row total of 40 times the p hat, which is 0.2, because that's what the column total divided by the grand total would be. So the expected count is 8. Now that we know the expected count is 8 in the cell of juniors, we know the expected number of uh, students that are not failing a class must be 32 because those two cells have to add up to the sample size of 40. All right, we then confirm the conditions that uh, the data came from a random sample and that all the expected counts are greater than 5. Now we calculate the degrees of freedom. That's rows minus 1 times column minus 1. We get 3 degrees of freedom. There's our chi-squared work. Just show a few of the cells so that the AP reader knows that you know what you're doing. Observe minus expected squared divided by expected. Add them all up. We get a chi-squared of 1.667. We use the three degrees of freedom to find the critical chi-squared value of 7.81 that traps 5%. So we can say that because our test statistic was less than the chi-squared test, uh, chi-squared statistic, that means the probability of type 1 error is more than 0.05, so we fail to reject the null. That means the evidence fails to suggest the alternative, so we would say the evidence fails to suggest that at least one of the proportions is different. And there it is. So we fail to reject the null, and uh, there is a, a chi-squared test of proportion. Hey, what, what is different? You guys! Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that's better. All right.